All right, so we're going to be on Westfield, guys, in the EBR Hotchkiss, and I'm going to be showing you why the EBR Hotchkiss is good at what it's supposed to do, right? And I say supposed to do, this is kind of the way Wargaming wants you to play these vehicles, I suppose. And once you start getting up to, like, the links, I think that's when things really start to change. But this Hotchkiss can still kind of do those quick, you know, maneuvers. And I'm going to be showing you that here because... These things have a very different playstyle. I would argue at tier 8, 9, and 10, tier 7 is where they start to branch off away from your standard light tanks. Again, I told you guys in another video that AMD 178B is basically just a regular light tank because it's no faster, can't really maneuver much better than your standard light tank, but the EBR Hotchkiss can wiggle like crazy, right? So what I decide to do is make an active run here and just knock out any tank destroyers. Um, not kill them, right? But just knock them out of position, basically, um, from getting shots at my guys that are gonna, going to be approaching this way. However, they all just huddle up here anyway. And this is a problem, man. Like, I feel like on the EU server, K0 is a huge brawling zone. And on the NA server, what a lot of people will do is just like camp on this hill because people play more passive, I've been told, on the NA server. But this is what I do, guys, right? I make this quick pass. I spot the Charioteer. I knock the Super Hellcat out of his position. And this is what this vehicle can do, right? And as you move up the tiers, right? Like, especially with the Lynx. I know the Lynx can do like 80-something kilometers an hour, right? And then you get up to the EBR 105, and that thing does like 90. So you can make these passes much quicker, but the EBR can, the Tier 7 EBRs can still do this. And I feel like Westfield's a good example of this. I had a comment on one of my videos that I actually just posted on Westfield today. It was my 3 Mark T54 lightweight game. And someone said that I post a lot of videos uh, with Westfield being like a very popular map. So I post Westfield too much is basically what he was saying. And I wish that that wasn't the case. I just post games that I do well in guys. So I don't choose the maps, right? Like if I have a really, really good game on, I don't know, Himmelsdorf by damage, like even then I might not post that. I never get that map anymore because I've blocked it. But as an example, right? Like I might not even post that because it's not really going to teach you guys that much really. You know, if you're seeing Himmelsdorf, if you're seeing Abbey, I will still post those videos. In fact, I've done quite a bit of Abbey, I feel like. But I just feel like you're not really going to learn that much about the light tank role, right? Like, you guys can watch a game um, be played in a medium or even a heavy on... Maybe not a heavy, but you guys know what I'm saying, right? Like, if you watch someone play a medium, any one of these other big-time streamers, you watch them play a medium or something like that on Abbey, you'll understand the map well enough where I feel like you'd be able to understand how to play a light tank on that map. Because you just have to do damage, right? On Abbey specifically. But there's other maps like that, Ensk and all these other maps, man, where I just feel like I'm not going to be teaching you guys that much. That's why a lot of my replays seem to be on more open spotting maps, right? So I just want to clear that up. Now, as I continue approaching this enemy team, I'm going to get a little more aggressive, a little more aggressive, and I got pretty lucky in this game. The stair hit me once, but I've made this play several times now in the Hotchkiss on Westfield, and this was the only game I had where I still had full HP like well into the game, right? We're like almost four minutes into this game, and I'm still full HP, so much so that I run after the Batchat 12T, hit him with two HE shells, and ram him. Like, that's how aggressive I'm getting, into the, getting in this game, because I have just realized that this team is not that great, man. Like, you will just sometimes get a sixth sense about these things. Um, I call it a sixth sense of your own because there's sixth sense in the game, right? But you'll you'll kind of get this sixth sense, guys, where you're like, this team is just not... They're not great, and I think we can be really aggressive here. And it's just a feel you have to get, right? Like, as you play the game enough, and I, I just have a good feeling like these guys aren't really paying attention either, so I'm going to come up here with the APCRs. I'm going to hit the, the T30 in the side, and I can see the T30 is kind of aiming for me. Sturamil is trying to hit me, so now I know the Sturamil is on a reload. I'm just going to go after the T30, and then my next shot, I think I wanted to try and focus the Sturamil. We'll see here. But I'm actually able to get a shot, another shot into the T-34, or, yeah, actually it was a T-34, right, not T-30. Um, and then I poke the stir meal here. I'm not sure if he's maybe trying to hit the Progetto, but you could just approach these guys now, right? And I'm just making sure that I'm not going to get whacked by the T-30, because the T-30 has a really big gun. And then the Black Prince appears. We're going to try and focus a shot on this guy. We hit him in the track. It's like... Boohoo, man, whatever. Someone else will clean him up. And we're going to stop this team, right? We're just the better team. 
And I'm going to advance to show you guys the end result here. We try and get a shot into the T-30, we miss, and I guess these two guys, the Su-130 and the Hawk-12 cap out, and that's the game. But I feel like this is a good one to show you how this tank starts, how this tech tree starts to differ from your standard light tanks, right? And I feel like it's important to note that because as you go higher up in the tiers, you're going to really start to notice that difference. So there you go. That's the game on Westfield, guys, and we'll get into the end plates. Um, again, I, I know I do Westfield a lot, but I feel like this is a very different game, right? Because we're in one of the wheeled vehicles and I hardly ever show you guys these wheelies. I've had a lot of recommendations to go down this line, so I'm starting to really go down the line and, and do my best to uh to show you guys the wheelies but i will always be a tracked light tank person i think i think once i get it to like the, the links i might start to have a lot of fun with these things but you will never see me playing them all the time man like it's just I, i'm i'm not a huge fan of them i'd rather stay passive you guys know my play style pretty well so we get the kamikaze batch here this is a first class game 1496 damage 1779 assist two kills and i'm currently running this thing like so we got the low noise exhaust in the scouting slot and then I'm running bounty vents and bounty optics. And when I try and mark this thing, I'll just run it with the bounty exhaust. And I'll have the second setup too as well. I'm not sure what I'll put for the second setup. I'll probably pull off vents and low noise exhaust. Or I'm sorry, optics and low noise exhaust. Uh, if it's a city map. But the thing, see the thing with these tanks guys is you have such little view range. You almost want to keep optics on even on the city map. But I think what I'll probably do is just pull off low noise exhaust and put on like V-stab if you can put on V-stab on these vehicles or like the aim assist or something like a rammer maybe. I might put rammer on it. I think ram like I really like to put rammer on tanks like this, but the thing is normally I would put that in the slot where I have optics if I'm on a city map. The thing is the EBR has no view range. So if you don't run optics then you're in a situation where even if you're on runeberg or something you're going to get out spotted by like heavies and crap right you don't want that to happen so i think you almost have to run optics on this thing and just drop low noise exhaust maybe you know because this thing has pretty good concealment so i think you can drop the low noise exhaust keep the vents and just run like a rammer here instead so that's probably what i'll do for the second setup but this is how i'm running it currently and it's working for me and again i told you guys i i did um use all people from my barracks so i had people in in barracks that weren't being used right so i did get use milla here and uh these other three people that were from battle pass seasons or whatever so i did get brothers in arms to start full concealment situational awareness snapshot smooth ride concealment on milla as well 86 percent recon so it's pretty stacked guys but that's about it i don't think i have anything else i really want to go over in this one i'll show you the team score here real quick and I'll show you the detailed report. And there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed. I will catch you for the next one. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.